And so starts the calming tones of the Kia e Nero. So this is my 7,281 mile review of my e Nero. Um, I've been really, really impressed with it. And I just thought I'd tell you the good things and the, and the bad things that I've found with this e Nero after, where are we, six months of driving. It's the four plus, it's the 64 kilowatt hour. It is just a good all round electric vehicle. The best EV I've actually lived with. And I think for the money, there is nothing out there to touch it yet. It's a bit bland. It's a bit boring when it comes to the looks. It's not exciting like a Tesla. So you haven't got the Tesla supercharger network. But for me, with 250 mile range, good rapid charging speeds, 6.6, well, 7 kilowatt onboard AC charger, up to 11 kilowatts if I find a three phase fast charger. Um, it's just a great all round EV. And I say with, with a range of being realistic, 240 to 280 miles in the summer, and some have had 300 miles range out of these, but let's be realistic, 280 at best. It covers all our needs. I'm not going to say 90%, 95%, 100% of my requirements are covered by this car. Well, but when you want to drive down to Land's End, Jonathan, from Orkney, you know, I want to drive 10 hours non-stop. I can't drive 10 hours non-stop. I used to. I can't do it. It's not safe. Case in point, we went to Penrith two weeks ago to Centre Park's Windfell Forest. So I planned my stops to coincide with hotels. I assume I overtake this tractor. Performance is great. Even in eco mode, you put your foot to the floor, it's plenty fast enough. Anyway, I digress. We left here on Orkney, caught the Scrabster boat. So we left here at, oh, was it six in the morning? Got to Scrabster for sort of half past eight a.m., 8.30 a.m. Um, and then drove down to Pit Lockery, which I think is 191 miles. I'll put a screenshot up now. And the best part of four hours driving. After four hours, I'm done. And we didn't need to rush. We're not going to rush. We're on holiday. Don't need to rush around the, the, the country getting to places. So after four hours, nice leisurely drive. Stop for a few comfort breaks because I'm of a man of a certain age. Got to a lovely hotel that we booked direct. We found it on booking.com, but we then booked direct for slightly even better pricing. He's got destination chargers, just recently installed. He's revamping his whole hotel, Westlands Hotel in Pit Lockery. And I think he's gonna have something like 40 odd car parking spaces, all with destination chargers, seven kilowatt chargers, charging posts, brilliant. So anyway, Tony will come in, so yeah, plug in, he activated them, turned them on, didn't charge us anything. It's all part of the service. Lovely hotel as well, thoroughly recommend it. So we got down there, had a lovely evening, grabbed a meal, went to sleep, woke up with a full charge. Um, and then the next day, set off down to Penrith, which I think is 196 miles. Can't remember. I'll put a screenshot up. Arrived at Centre Parks uh, with, I think, 40 miles left. Plugged in at Centre Parks. You book a six-hour slot at Windfell Forest. And, um, yeah, again, it wasn't 100% charged because... I was plugging in on day one of our break, midweek break, so there was another four days to run. I didn't want to leave it at 100% charge, so I think I charged to 
which was more than enough to then on the return journey go back to the same hotel in Pitlochry and just repeat the process getting back up to Scrabstead to get the ferry home. So that trip of for the sake of argument 400 miles I didn't use any public charging no rapids no fast charges I just used the chargers when I was asleep or when I was enjoying my holiday when I was doing something else so that's the beauty of having an EV with a range of around 250 miles didn't even have to plan for any rapid charging I didn't have to cross my fingers to see whether the charge place Scotland charges would be working so I have to say in all the years I've been driving EVs that holiday down to Penrith was just easy it was just like driving dare I say it a fossil fuel car I think the Enero is hitting the sweet spot with regard to range I really really do but we'll still get people saying well I'll get an EV when it does a genuine 300 mile range 400 mile range I'll get an EV when it does 600 miles without stopping I don't know anyone who drives 600 miles without stopping so I think this is the sweet spot for years to come when it comes to range so I love it for that it's got some quirks um, I'll put a clip in now of setting the charge timer it's a little bit confusing it's not straightforward you have to set a departure date now if you set the departure date for the next day and you tell it to charge on the preferred tariff or the certain times so you can get like the the go tariff from octopus it presumes you want 80 percent or 100 percent whatever you've set the limit to on the car it presumes you want that for the following day so it will override the preferred charge times in favor of getting you to 100 percent for your preferred departure time so long story short as you'll see in the video it was it's best to select a day that's days in advance not the following morning and then it will charge just in the preferred times now if i'm doing it wrong <laughs> please leave a comment uh, below but yeah once you get your head around that brilliant it will charge stop and start a charge or start and stop a charge whenever you want it to talking of charging let's look at economy so on my trip great menus on the dashboard you can scroll around and I have saved uh, since I've had the car it's average is averages so over 7286 miles I've averaged 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour which as an average I think is exceptional for this size SUV crossover type car it's absolutely brilliant it really is so efficient um, what the Koreans are doing under the bonnet is some sort of magic I think Tesla have hit the efficiency really well and then it's Kia Hyundai and everyone else is just following uh, let's not mention the is it the Stellantis group Vauxhall Peugeot Citroen still yet to get a handle on efficiency I think it's down to mechanical drag and aerodynamics but Kia are really leading that along with Hyundai this is basically a Hyundai underneath love the economy so I've seen five miles per kilowatt hour I've seen it as low as three and a half but like I say on average it's 3.9 that beeping lane departure system some find it annoying I find it useful um, it will steer itself down the motorway that's pretty good it's not Tesla like but it's not far off better than the Leaf to be honest um, other things that are better than the Leaf no rapid gate this at very cold temperatures has thermal management where it will preheat the battery or oh, heat the battery so it charges faster um, yeah no rapid gating although I've not done multiple rapids because I've not driven that far to be honest but um, from what I've read there's there's no rapid gating on the e-nero 
I love the flappy paddles. I love the ability to switch to auto regen, auto with no um, arrows in the box. The car just drifts. It doesn't drift as much as the Ionic I had. That's the old shape, 28 kilowatt by hour Ionic. But it does, it does drift really well. It just, just coasts. Um, and in the auto setting, it is brilliant in as much that it will see the car in front and automatically start to reduce the speed so you don't run into the back of the car by applying more regen automatically really really good the last few meters you've got to apply the brake yourself it, it, we won't actually stop the car you can activate stopping by holding in the left hand paddle held in we will bring the car to a stop it's not as aggressive as the e-pedal on the leaf, but it will bring it to a stop. And once you get used to that distance, it's really, really good. Very intuitive and becomes second nature. Or you can just drive it like a normal car. The other thing I do like is on the dashboard, you have how much energy you've obviously recouped through regen, but also how many miles that equates to. Quite like that. Um, lots of knobs lots of buttons are there too many buttons possibly but you get used to it to be honest um, apple carplay android auto brilliant it stays connected far better than it did in the leaf uh, it's not wireless um, so you have to plug in your usb the other thing i do like is just little details like um, the little cubby hole in the next to the cup holders in the central bit here where you can poke your cable through to plug into the usb it keeps everything neat and tidy i like that a lot heated seats fantastic heated steering wheel brilliant one little niggle but auto hold really good now let's lump all those together auto hold heated seats heated steering wheel now when you stop turn the car off turn the car back on again <laughs> all those things you'd selected have got to get turned off so if you're nipping in and out of the car in cold weather it's a little ritual it's like a first world problem you get back in you've got to hit the heated seats heated steering wheel auto hold and then you're back to where you were would be nice mr kia if when you've set those things that they stay on it does on the leaf you can leave the heated steering wheel on and the heated seats and it will stay on um, so that would have that would be nice but again you know it's not the end of the world to have to press buttons quite like press, pressing buttons to be honest but anyway that's a little niggle sat nav brilliant for an in-car sat nav surprisingly very good um, what else is there? The EV button is one of my favourite buttons. A driver only heating, press one button and it just heats just the driver's side. Aircon's really effective, the demist of the windscreen. Sunroof was nice in the summer. Uh, when you put it into reverse, you've got the ability of telling the wing mirrors to dip so you can see the kerb, and that's through just selecting right or left on the door card for the wing mirror adjustment it will then dip the mirrors as you reverse reversing camera is good in the day at night it's poor and all the word for it it's very very blurry and almost pixelated at night modifications have i done any mods it sounds like i'm an 18 year old again modifications i fitted a cam wipe and uh, basically that's a little clever little brush that you fit to the rear view with the rear wiper just going past this chap in a truck with a trailer don't know what he's doing um, and then every time you wash the rear window or you've got the wipers on and you put it in reverse the rear wiper will come on that little brush brushes the lens which is really good because before i'd had that cam wipe because of the shape of the car, that rear camera gets dirty very quickly. 
out so I was always out rubbing it but uh, and clearing it with my finger the lens so the cam white is brilliant really recommend that some chap in the Netherlands I think he's printing them on his um, 3d printer hats off to him I think it was 36 pounds a lot of money <laughs> for a bit of plastic but worth every penny it's really really good well impressed with the cam wipe so recommend you get one of them um, what else seats are comfortable the arm rests in the right place that place on the door to rest your arm that's in the right place great thing for myself and my lovely wife Ursula is the memory seats I'm 6'4 Ursula is 5'4 there's 12 inches between us and in the past it has been an interesting discussion whenever we jumped in and out of the leaf I do wish you wouldn't leave the car seat so far back because I'd struggle to reach the you, you get the gist so I'm memory seat number one and Ursula is memory seat number two and it makes for marital bliss well done Kia on the Nero 4 Plus for having memory seats also with a comfort setting which was in the Ionic that we had basically you can change the comfort setting how far it basically comfort access so I get in the car the seat will actually go back to allow me to get in and then go forward a bit uh, which Ursula appreciates and when you turn the car off the seat will go back slightly to let you get in and, out, in and out now you can change that amount that it actually moves to suit your needs as regards legroom and for me in this car being six foot four if I have the seat right back I can't reach the pedals comfortably it's too far away so this is one of the very few cars in fact I can't remember another car I've ever driven where with the seat right back it was too far back for me so well done Kia for making a car that fits lanky blokes or lanky ladies um, so that's good and even with my seat in my position shock horror people can actually sit behind me now in the past that has never been the case it's always been oh can the shortest person sit behind me because I have to have my seat right back or I do a bit of a compromise whereby let me just turn around here whereby I'll be driving uncomfortably in order to give my rear seat passengers enough leg room so yeah the driver's seat the adjustment it's electrically adjusted just for the driver's seat not for the passenger seat really really good um, what else front rear sensors they're useful lots of bings and bongs but you get used to it guessometer very accurate I think the lowest I've had it at is it 10% um, I'm yet to see Mr Turtle but from one of red get below 10% and you could be in for a bit of a surprise um, with regard to whether 10% is really 10% or whether it goes into turtle mode sooner let me know in the comments if you've experienced an e-nero below 10% um, but I say again with such a big battery it's highly unlikely I'm going to be cutting it that fine on any long trip space wise um, it's perfect for us me and Ursula and the dog the dog sits in the boot he's quite happy lots of storage I like the fact you can store the load cover in the boot floor which we've done now permanently because you don't have to keep anything out of people's sight up here on Orkney you know there's very very little car crime here so I've just stored that away to keep it safe um, yeah what else can I tell you wireless charging for the phone that works well Bluetooth works well answering calls on the steering wheel etc oh I'll tell you one good feature when you've got the radio on or music obviously you've got the volume controls on the steering wheel 
um, you can just press the volume control there's a little speaker with a line through it and that just kills the volume on the radio sometimes I like to do that if I want directions and I'm coming up to a complicated island or a junction for some reason I have to have the radio off so I can think clearer without any distractions that's just a bloke thing but yeah I like that um, what else charges quickly I've spoke about that it's just a great car um, being leased here of course as part of the reflex project so I got a cracking deal same as everybody else so I didn't get any preferential treatment from the reflex project and my good friends at drive electric um, but yeah everything is is good would I want anything different I think I've said in a previous video and I'll put a link above <clears throat> if I was going south on a long trip then with a Tesla supercharger network there is nothing to really second that um, there's nothing really to better it rather but like I've said before I don't want a Model 3 it's too low for me on my bad back this just suits me for 99.9% .9 of the time jumping in and out of the car 20 minute drives 30 minute drives around Orkney this is just perfect getting in and out of the Model 3 every 20 or 30 minutes would be annoying and I would be grunting and groaning every time I got in and out of the car um, and I still find those flush door handles a bit of a faff you know you can't just quickly open the door you've got to press it with your thumb and grab the other bit yeah I know why they've done it but yeah it's and the Tesla Model 3 drives great it's a great driver's car handles fantastically but if you just want to get from A to B really efficiently really comfortably with all the things you really want heated seat heated steering wheel lots of beeps and bongs then this is great it really is so there we go there's my 7295 mile review of my e-nero uh, would I have another one yes would I have chosen anything else no would I have had an Ionic 5 everyone's ranting and raving about the Ionic 5 in fact my good friend Andrew Till uh, Mr EV has done a video of his trips in his Ionic 5 I'll put a link in now it's not that efficient same as the EV6 from Kia so the EV6 and the Hyundai 5 Hyundai 5? Ionic 5 basically the same floor plan but they're not as efficient so yeah I wouldn't have one of those too wide for Orkney roads too big too expensive not as efficient it's got a big battery but more or less the same range as this 64 kilowatt hour so, uh, e Nero. so if I had a choice over the EV6 and the Ionic 5 and the e Nero, I'd stick with this I really really would because it suits me physically personally with the trips we do it's great doesn't look the best it's a bit clumpy at the front clumpy is that even a word snub nosed but it's still really aero and that's the reason they've done it got the ugly ducks down the side of the front wheels that smooth the air down over the front driving wheels all those little things help so no there's nothing else really that I would really really want over this electric vehicle so there we go that's the end of my review if you stuck with me this long thank you don't forget to like share and subscribe I'll probably do the next report um, at its first service I might try and chat to my local friendly Hevra garage Conrad and see if I can just do a bit of filming of him taking the wheels off like I did for the leaf service just to see 
how everything's faring underneath after 12 months of driving in on Orkney on in salt air winds that blow a hoolie the very latest the 22 model year e Nero has got the new badge love the new badge I think the old badge is a bit old hat the new badge looks brilliant but the 22 model year doesn't have the VEZ button which you can turn off now the VEZ button is the audible warning outside so I quite like the ability to turn that off and that's missing I think it's because the European rules on pedestrian warning system sounds for electric vehicles has changed it's become mandatory for Europe so that's why the option to turn the sound off has disappeared from all the trim levels talking of trim levels I said it was finishing and carrying on the the e-nero 2 long range with leased loads of those mainly in flame red not too dissimilar to the color of my top uh, that has the VES button missing also has the heat pump missing so the 4 plus has the heat pun pump they've deleted the heat pump to save costs I don't know how much money they've actually saved but you turn the heater on in an Enero 2 initially and you do lose a chunk of range turn the heater on in the 4 plus with the heat pump you lose hardly any it's uh, minimal and it also heats up quicker in the 4 plus than it does in the non heat pump Nero 2 so something to consider but again I did a demo this morning with a customer who's thinking of seriously of leasing a, a Nero 2 because of the great value and you know I explained to him about the lack of the heat pump and um, I just said well if you leave at the same time every day for work just set the set the preheat on the car and charge it up from the house so when you jump in the car the cars already up to temperature and you won't take as much energy out of the range out of the battery and lose that range so he's going to sign up for an Ian Aero 2 but there are just a few of the things love this great car well done I'd have another one thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe and we'll see you next time